John here, guys, and today we're talking about how I bought a Prusa 3D printer. That's right, a Prusa of my very own. Oh my gosh. And not only that, guys, I didn't just buy one Prusa, I got two of them. Now, having any Prusas, much much less two, is like having two TVs back in 1955. Wow, you must be rich. Oh, honey, he's teasing you. Nobody has two television sets. I mean, who does that? Well, I was super fortunate enough to find a post by a local guy that must have had a 3D print farm, building parts for people and selling them. And he was just like giving that part of his business up and selling off a lot of his printers. So these are actually an old model. It is a Prusa MK2S and I got two of them and I was able to get a really good price to give me the pair. Basically, I ended up paying about the price you would pay for an Ender 3 V2 uh, for each one of these. Now, the thing of it is, I've been wanting to try to use Prusa for a while. I've had a total of four Creality printers. I started with the Creality CR10S, I started, then I had an Ender 3, then I had a modern Ender 3 and an Ender 3 V2, and they all print really, really well, but you do have to spend on each of them a good amount of time manually leveling the, leveling the bed. Sometimes every five prints, sometimes every 10 prints, sometimes every 20 prints. But when you do, every once in a while, you can level it in about five or 10 minutes. And then every once in a while, you gotta spend about an hour or so re-leveling everything because it just gets out of whack somehow. Um, so I had been hearing the myth of how great and easy these Prusa printers are and I wanted to try for myself, but I couldn't afford the $800 price tag of a new Prusa MK3S. And then actually, very recently, they upgraded that and now they are selling the Prusa MK3S Plus. Now that printer is about $800 shipped to your door or a little over a thousand if you get one pre-assembled. Um, so because these were already pre-assembled, that saved me a bit and the price was right. Now this older printer has a couple of things that the newer ones don't have. It does not have a filament sensor. It does not have the metal metallic bed where you just pop it and the prints fly off like magic. It does not have the upgraded Bontec extruder gear. So it has the older style extruder and there are a couple of other differences as well. Let's just talk about at the beginning how it works. The Prusas print amazingly well. Um, and if I had to give you a quick summary, I would say that you can make an Ender 3 print about as good as the Prusa, but you're gonna spend a lot more time tweaking, constantly tweaking your settings and stuff, getting all those parts right. You're probably gonna wanna buy some modifications for it. The Prusa just does it dead great, just out of the box with the stock Prusa slicer, the stock Prusa settings. You just tell it some generic PLA settings and boom, it's like 90% good, which is a remarkable quality for 3D printing every time. It just gets the leveling for you. It gets the print quality for you. It prints faster for most materials, especially flexibles like TPU. It was just blowing my mind across the board. The supports I find are easier to remove in Prusa Slicer than Cura Slicer. Uh, so across the board, it's just easier. Now I can tell, uh, me personally as a user, how much better it is in one simple fact. And that fact is I'm lazy. My hobby is building and flying drones. That's what this channel is primarily focused on. So for me, my hobby is not wanting to constantly tweak my 3D printers. My hobby is wanting to generate parts like this GoPro Hero 9 mount that for this little micro drone and then use them. So it was gonna be very easy for me to tell which one was the easiest because it was just gonna be the one I was using the most over time. So on my little rack, I kind of repositioned everything to where I could actually fit three printers. I got two Prusas up there and my modded Ender 3. Um, my modded Ender 3 and my Ender 3 V2 actually print pretty close to the same, but the modded one has direct drive. And so I left them up there to see over the next several weeks which one I would be using the most. And I was hoping I would kind of be going back and forth, back and forth. And honestly, other than doing some prints to compare the quality, I didn't even touch my enders. I didn't touch them because the Prusa just works. You don't ever have to re-level it. I, I 
didn't expect that. I didn't expect me to just shift over to all Prusa so quickly. And it's because, like I said, my hobby is not constantly tweaking, modding, adjusting 3D printing. My hobby is just wanting those parts to use for my other hobby. So if you're a hobbyist that has 3D printing as a creativity source, as a part generation source, as a prototyping source for another hobby, you want something that's gonna work every time. But the problem ends up becoming, if you are like me and can't afford a Prusa MK3S at 800 bucks, what are you supposed to do? Because for some reason, like once people have these Prusas, they don't ever let them go. I can't find, it's like you can't find them used anywhere. And if they are used like on eBay or something, a lot of times people are selling for more than a new one. Like the current model, if you go to try to look on eBay for a Prusa Mini, the Mini goes for 350 bucks. But people are selling them for like five or 600 bucks. Why? Because there's a lead time. You have to wait a several weeks to get them in some instances. And so people are, I guess, paying a premium to be able to get them right away. I mean, that's crazy. So some of these old printers, I've seen them um, regularly, even a Prusa MK2S like I have here for sometimes five, $600. And that's just crazy. We just spend a little bit more and get the newest one, but yeah. So if you can happen to find a used Prusa, it's going to be more reliable than an Ender 3. Um, I'm going to make a heads up video comparing both of them, but I really just wanted to talk about how easy everything was at a box. Now, the thing that took me the longest was to figure out the, um, cause I did move the printers in a car. I drove them from one picking them up and things were kind of out of whack. Uh, the guy that sold it to me did give me a quick rundown, but um, he suggested I recalibrate everything. So I did the whole calibration thing. It took me a few hours to get up and running. And the main reason for that was just because I wasn't too familiar with how you level the bread in Prusa. It's super easy, guys. You just do the live Z adjust. So you get some test prints and you kind of can lower the bed up and down. Um, as it's printing to get that perfect layer height. Let's take a look at some printing examples. Here is a Baby Yoda that was printed on the Prusa MK2S. This is a nearly four-year-old printer and look at the quality. I left some of the supports on so you could see how it prints, but really, really good. Very hard to see some of the lines. Um, right there and if you notice on his little coat and his collar there's two different texture of fabrics this is sort of a coarseness and this is even coarser that's sort of like a fur and you can really see that come out in the print just absolutely stunning quality let's take a look at one that was printed on the ender 3 this was actually done with prusa settings and it looks equally as good in fact you can really see you probably won't even be able to see it on camera but if i really hold this like an inch or two away from my eye there's some slight ringing here and this one does look a little bit smoother so that just goes to so show if you get your ender settings down uh, it can be just as high a quality as a prusa print and sometimes in some cases just a little bit better now these are two different models so that may account for some of this Let's look at another couple of comparisons. Here is a smaller version printed on the Prusa, and you can see, uh, if I zoom in a little bit, you can start to see a little bit of that ringing. Um, you can, s it's really hard to see, man. This is like almost perfection. Um, most printers would be quite happy with this. Here's another one I did with the Ender. And what you see right here, I kept getting a layer shift. And that can happen with any printer, um, but it just seems to happen slightly more frequently with the Ender. And this is the first time I've had this type of issue. Um, so it's pretty rare after a couple years of owning. Let's look at some more examples. This is a really small shrunken down version of the Apollo Astronaut. You can see right here, here the prusa and the semi translucent and here the ender and man look how close they are in quality i mean even if i zoom in all the way it's really hard um i don't i don't store my filaments i store them in a tote with some silica in there and some desiccant to help keep them dry but you're going to get better mileage if you store them in something that's completely airtight or if you use a food dryer to dry them out. So that's why both of these, you see a little bit of stringing and I wanted to show you that on either printer, um, you can still get that stringing if you don't store your filaments properly. 
This is completely fine to me because if I just hit this with a heat gun for about five seconds, all those little strings will disappear. It's pretty easy cleanup. Um, but the results are very, very close in this case. Um, if you look at the bottoms of the feet, you can see a lot of detail on both here. Um, the easiest way to look at which one performed a little better is in the fingers um, and in the little knobs on the suit. You can see they're a little bit smoother on the Prusa, but still very, very close. Here is another example. This is a tiny Donatello Prusa over here, Ender right here. Again, left the supports on so you could see. These were both sliced with the Prusa slicer. I tried to take that variable out of play here. They're actually printing the exact same G code as well. And so in this case, they both really look fantastic. Um, and I would put this as equal. There's no winner in this case. One thing that the Prusa does a little bit better is print flexibles. These two were printed with the Ender, this one with the Prusa. Um, this one you can see, uh, even though it's the same material, is a lot firmer. Something about the way it handles the high temperatures, you can see this one's a bit flexier, even on the thicker parts. And you can see there is a little bit of pimples right there. Now that could be tuned out if I really spent the time to, to tune. I have spent some time getting some tunes from some of my local printing guys. They've helped me to achieve this. In fact, um, I copied all the mods that one of my buddies did and used his settings to print this with the Ender. And this is perfection. I mean, it's really, really good. So you can see, if you do take the time to get the modifications right, tune your retractions and all that stuff, you can achieve near perfection. This was done on the Prusa. And while it's very stiff, um, there's still a little bit of tuning to be done for this particular filament. You can see I still do have a little bit of stringing. And so out of the box, this is perfectly usable. I had to do zero tuning to get this, but with tuning on the ender, I actually got a little farther because I would definitely say this is better than this. Now the last example is gonna be this pen holder that I'm printing for another channel that does stationary supplies and pens. Um, this is done on the Prusa, this is done on the Ender. At first glance, they both look pretty equal, but if you look inside the holes on the one that was done by the Ender, there is some very small little pimples in some of those holes. And if you look at the one done on the Prusa, it does not have that. The Prusa, I was also able to print this, which is a gray PLA plus that I've had. That is super difficult to print. I was never able to really print anything with this on my Ender and with the Prusa on stock PLA settings, it works. So the other thing is, this was actually my initial attempt at printing this on the Ender. So what do you see there? It failed right over here. And that's because the bed can get slightly out of level over time. Sometimes you have to adjust it every five prints, sometimes every 10 prints. You might be able to get 20 prints in a row without adjusting it, but it does require some adjustment while the Prusa right here requires none. It's just put the card in hit print and it works like 99% of the time. It can also print um, some very difficult to print filaments easier without having to do the additional tuning that it would take to get this uh, to be successful. Um, so that just goes to show you some examples of the reliability. Ability. That's what you're paying for. You're paying for the additional reliability, the additional ease of use, and the much, much less frequency in having to reprint something because of a failure. Now, for a lot of people, it's not worth that increase of price of four times. But if you are lucky enough to find a used Prusa like I did, it may be worth it to save you some of these headaches. Even this old Prusa MK2S worked out of the box with my um, Raspberry Pi 4 with Octopi. I just plugged it into the USB port, sent a print job over the air, and then boom, it printed like magic. So you can use the USB card, you can use uh, Octopi, really, really nice. I can't believe my luck 
uh, getting an old Prusa like this. I, I do have, that I just recently got in, a Prusa MK 2.5. So that does have some of the upgrades of the newer Prusas on board. I'm gonna do a comparison uh, compared to that very soon. I also have in a Prusa MK3 clone kit that I'm gonna build and compare against all of these different things in case you're curious about is the clone for half the price worth it so stay tuned lots of really cool um, 3d printing things coming up on the channel if you're curious about the myth on is prusa really as great as everyone says it is but you got to remember if you're talking about a new prusa versus a new ender it's four times the price does it print four times as good no absolutely not with a little bit of tweaking a few hours even on a stock ender three you can get the same quality. The difference is the amount of time that you're gonna to need to spend tweaking, maintaining, bed leveling. I'm speaking of noise. I absolutely needed that concrete slab under my Prusa printer. That was the biggest negative of this whole thing is that it was loud. It was louder than my Ender 3 was stock out of the box. Now on my Ender 3, I put the uh, Big Tree Tech silent board in there, the SKR 1.2, I believe it is. And that made the Ender super, super quiet. This is not quiet, it is loud, very loud. It was so loud, in fact, that I thought I might not even be able to keep this printer because you could hear it halfway across in the house. That's how loud it was. But by putting some foam padding and then this concrete slab on top, it reduced the noise quite a bit. It's still louder than my Ender 3 or Ender 3 V2, but it's good enough to where I could have it in the same room as my office. And if it's printing at the same time that I'm having a conference call, it's not a problem. Um, so it's definitely not as quiet as the Enders, um, but I would say a concrete block with foam underneath it for some noise isolation is a 100% must. What do you think in the comments, guys? Are you printing an old printer? Are you, are you printing a new printer are you looking what are you looking at getting next as far as printing are you looking at getting into it for the first time if you're lucky enough to find a used prusa for a decent price i would highly suggest that you snag one it's just so hard these guys, these days guys thanks